Boa got an early start in the K-pop industry when she debuted on August 25th, 2000 at the age of 13 as a long-term project of SM Entertainment. But Boa's journey happened almost by accident. At the age of 11, she accompanied her older brother to his audition for SM Entertainment, but it was her smile and fresh face that the talent scouts took notice of and signed her that very same day. At the same time, SM Entertainment was seeing great success with their acts like HOT, SES, and Shenhua, and they needed a young solo act to add to their roster and expand their international audience. The way that SM prepared Boa was new in Korea for the time, and it took years for SM to create the act that Korean and Japanese audiences saw in the early 2000s. Japan was, and still is, the second largest music market in the world, and the company wanted an act that would be localized to capitalize on that market. Originally coded as Project Mystique, then the BOA Project, the company invested 3 million US dollars to help train BOA in not only singing and dancing, but also Japanese language training so Japanese audiences would accept her more easily. South Korea's audience was limited. As physical sales of music albums were on the decline and music piracy was up, therefore the country sought to turn its music industry into an export market to be able to see the much needed return on investment. SM partnered with the Japanese entertainment company Avex to tailor the act perfectly, and SM hoped to make its money back quickly. $3 million was an exorbitant investment since South Korea was just coming off of its financial collapse of 1997. However, Boa didn't blow up the charts at first. Her Korean debut of ID Peace B in the second half of 2000, as well as her follow-up singles, did not meet the company's grand expectations. But she sold more than 100,000 copies, which was decent. But the Boa project was bigger than one country. She debuted in Japan in May of 2001 with the Japanese version of ID Peace B and did publicity interviews with no translator. SM and AVEX used BOA's culturally ambiguous name to make the population think she was Japanese, and it worked. This came at a time when the internet age was not as ubiquitous as it is now, so the general public never really knew where she was from. BOA's release of her first full-length album, Listen to My Heart in Japan in 2002, was a breakthrough and was certified as a million unit seller and entered the Japanese Oricon chart. You still my number one. That success then brought her back to Korea as a star. This was significant not only for she and SM, but as a Korean act overall. Korea had just removed its prohibition on Japanese cultural imports in 2002 that it had held since World War II thus making her the first Korean artist to reach number one on the Japanese Oricon charts. Boa set many records in Japan, such as having her first six albums all reach the top spot and having multiple million seller albums as a female solo artist, and a foreign one at that. Boa's success in Japan proved that K-pop music labels can successfully enter the Japanese market and Asia overall as a means for growth and profitability. Boa's success came at the right time. In 2003, just as Boa's popularity was growing, her label was hitting hard times. SM Entertainment was the leading Korean music label, but it was on rocky ground because during that period, the company's beloved acts HOT and SES both disbanded, their investments into subsidiary labels and debuted acts like Milk failed, and Shenhua left the company in July of 2003 after their contract expired. 
As a result, SM was losing the confidence of their investors, and SM Entertainment founder Isuman said in an interview that Boa's massive success in Japan in those critical years helped save the company and proved that the company's investment in the Japanese market was lucrative, and more importantly, could be reproduced. Her success opened the door for SM's next group, TVXQ, to debut and tackle the Japanese market simultaneously, as well as to allow them to set their own monumental records in Asia. And once again, all of this occurred before the rise in the internet usage and before YouTube was even a thing. Her successful work with SM Entertainment at a time when the idea of a Korean act having a successful international following was unheard of. Combined with being able to reproduce that formula for subsequent acts not only in her label but throughout the K-pop industry shows that she established a foundation for success that allowed later solo and group acts to capitalize on that. While some acts have gone further than she in expanding their international reach, she was the first to successfully leave the Korean market, and this means she paved the way for others in the industry. In fact, many of today's K-pop artists cite her as an inspiration for their desire to become entertainers. She's still very active and has a die-hard group of loyal fans. It's now been 20 years, and it's easy to say that she has had an incredible career so far at still such a young age. Boa shows no signs of stopping. Debuting in a very different time and era in the K-pop arena, she arguably helped elevate the K-pop genre and Korean soft power throughout the 2000s. Her successes and even failures over the years helped set a standard on what to do to make it as a successful Korean artist beyond the domestic market. So much already under Boa's belt and written down in the history books, but there's still so much to tell for her. Congratulations, Boa, on your 20th anniversary. The impact you've had on the world and even myself cannot be put into words. Thank you for helping pave the way. The foundation you helped set on your journey has proven to be the catalyst for others to follow and continue to build on and take even further today. Here's to you and another 20 years. Thank you so much for watching everyone. If you haven't already, you can check out my previous video on Boa's 20th anniversary where I go over my personal top 20 favorite songs by her. Hope you all enjoyed the video and learned something along the way. Please be sure to hit that subscribe and like button for me. And while you're here, check out many more of my videos and see you next time.